Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Youssef. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Dhabiya Palace. The cabinet commended the outcomes of a meeting attended by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, and the President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah Al Sisi. The cabinet highlighted the meeting's importance in strengthening multilateral cooperation and coordination across various regional and international issues of common interest and challenges facing the, by the Arab region. The cabinet conveyed its congratulations to the Supreme Commander, His Majesty the King, and to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince on the BDF's 54th anniversary, and the cabinet also congratulated the members of the BDF who stand ready and are committed to defending and safeguarding the kingdom. The cabinet reviewed the latest regional and international developments, noting that Bahrain prioritizes the discourse as a means to ensure peaceful resolutions. The cabinet further affirmed that the Bahrain employs mutual respect and the fostering of good relations to combat extremist ideologies and to maintain security and promote prosperity. The cabinet noted Bahrain's commitment to upholding the principles of the United Nations Charter, which stipulates non-interference in the internal affairs of foreign countries, adherence to human values, tolerance, coexistence, and a peaceful settlement of crises within the framework of strengthening international cooperation. In light of the memorandum by the Minister of Interior, the Cabinet affirmed His Royal Highness's directives for the greater use of the Alternative Sanctions and Measures Law. His Royal Highness also mandated the Ministry of Interior to implement the Alternative Sentencing Program in conjunction with the Open Prisons Program. The Cabinet commended the Ministry of Interior and the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments for their efforts in this regard. The Cabinet declared Thursday, the 10th of February, a half work day at ministries and state departments to mark National Sports Day. This half-work day will reiterate the importance of sports and allow staff to engage in sports events. In this regard, the Cabinet stressed the importance of following all precautionary measures to protect public health. The Cabinet strongly condemned and denounced the launch of a ballistic missile by the terrorist Houthi militia against the UAE. The Cabinet affirmed that Bahrain supports all measures undertaken by the UAE to protect its security and stability. The Cabinet discussed a number of memorandums during the meeting with the following outcomes. The approval of the following memorandums. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft law amending Article 16 of Common Custom Law of the GCC states. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a draft decision regarding the Unified Guide for Classification for Goods for the Countries of the GCC states. A memorandum by the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunication regarding a multilateral technical memorandum of understanding between authorities investigating aircraft accidents and incidents within the Middle East and North Africa region. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's response to three proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet received the reviewed the following topics. A memorandum by the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications regarding the most prominent achievements related to the registration and licensing of small sea vessels. Statistics revealed that a total of 18,667 services have been provided in 2021 and that the electronic transformation of all services will be provided by June 2022. The Cabinet then took note of ministerial reports regarding the Kingdom's participation in the consultative meeting of Arab Forum Ministers and the World Food Forum 2022. 22, the foreign participation of the ministers and the visits of foreign delegations to Bahrain for the month of February. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Turkey, Mablu Çavuşoğlu, at Dibiya Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the growth of relations between Bahrain and Turkey and noted the importance of furthering bilateral cooperation across various sectors, particularly within the economic sector. The minister conveyed the greetings of the President of Turkey, Rajab Tayyip Erdogan, to His Royal Highness, and in return, His Royal Highness conveyed his greetings to the President of Turkey. Regional and international issues of common interest were also discussed. The minister expressed his gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness and highlighted His Royal Highness's commitment to furthering ties between the two countries. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa along with His Highness Major Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa visited the U.S. Fifth Fleet Headquarters following a welcoming military marine salute. His Royal Highness was repeat received by the Commander of the United States Naval Forces Central Command and Commander of the United States Fifth Fleet Vice Admiral Charles Bradford Cooper II and the Chargé d'Affaires of the U.S. Embassy in Bahrain Maggie Nardi. His Royal Highness highlighted the strength of strategic ties between Bahrain and the U.S. Bahrain's commitment to strengthening military and defense relations. He emphasized the importance of strategic alliances to upholding maritime, economic, and environmental security, noting the role played by the U.S. Fifth Fleet in this regard. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of protecting international maritime traffic for th from threats that adversely impact global trade, thanking the U.S. for their role in this regard, and stressed the need to unify international efforts to further strengthen regional maritime security. He was briefed on regional security issues, including the U.S. Fifth fleet's role, tasks, and cooperation with Bahraini forces. His Royal Highness then attended the launch of International Maritime Exercise 22. He was also briefed on new uncrewed technologies and uncrewed surface vessels engaged in the exercise and the Royal Bahraini Navy's participation in the exercise. His Royal Highness reiterated that joint exercises are crucial to ensuring readiness to address various challenges and safeguarding regional and international navigation and maritime trade. He extended his gratitude and wished success to the commander of the U.S. NAV Sint and CSF, the Royal Bahraini Navy, and all participating countries. His Royal Highness was then briefed by Vice Admiral Charles Bradford Cooper II on the IMX CE 2022, which commended, commenced today and will run till the 17th of February 2022. The joint exercise aims to increase the capabilities and strengthen the relations of the participating countries' naval forces to benefit international order and peace. Vice Admiral Cooper noted that the exercise is the largest of its kind in the Middle East, with 60 countries and international organizations participating. It is also the largest drone exercise in the world, with more than 80 drones from 10 participating countries. The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and several other senior officials were also in attendance. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Bar Rashid Al Zayani, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Turkey, Mevlu Shafasolo, held a press conference on the occasion of his official visit to Bahrain. Dr. Zayani delivered a statement in which he welcomed the Turkish minister's visit within the framework of close relations and a common desire to develop bilateral cooperation between the two countries. In light of the directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the President of Turkey, Rajab Tayyip Erdogan. 
He stated that His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the Turkish President of Foreign Affairs welcoming his visit to the kingdom and expressed appreciation of bilateral relations and friendship ties between the two countries. He affirmed the importance of joint action to develop bilateral cooperation in various fields and enhance economic cooperation to serve common interests and achieve the aspirations of both countries and people. Dr. Zayani also stated that he held a constructive discussion session with the Turkish Minister of Foreign Affairs. He added that both sides discussed political and security security challenges and developments that are facing the region and threatens its security and stability and affirm the need to instill peace, security and stability in the region and put an end to all conflicts. The Turkish Foreign Minister expressed pleasure in visiting Bahrain and expressed thanks to the Foreign Minister for the General's hospitality. He affirmed Turkey's support to Bahrain and chairing the Asian Cooperation Dialogue. He also highlighted the need to hold a joint economic committee meeting next March. He praised his meeting with His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and discuss the discussion the economic vision affirming the support of Turkey to Bahrain in this regard, in addition to support to regional issues affirming the importance of combating terrorism. He also affirmed the importance of bilateral cooperation in the field of training and expressed his keenness to receive Bahrain diplomats who wish to learn Turkish. He also expressed pleasure in receiving the Foreign Minister of in Antalya in March to participate in Antalya conference. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Bar Rashid Zayani, yesterday held a session of official talks with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Turkey, Mevlut Cavusoglu, who is on an official visit to Bahrain. The Minister of Foreign Affairs welcomed his Turkish counterpart, praising the friendly relations between the two countries, which are based on mutual respect and cooperation. He expressed the Kingdom's aspiration to enhance cooperation with Turkey in various fields. Zayani underscored the importance of enhancing cooperation with regards to political and security challenges facing the Middle East and the need to establish security, stability and peace in the region, as well as achieving the aspirations of its peoples for development and prosperity. He further wished Turkey and its friendly people further progress and development. The Turkish Foreign Affairs Minister thanked Minister Zayani express, expressing pleasure in visiting Bahrain. He hailed the friendly relations between the two countries, stressing Turkey's keenness on enhancing relations and cooperation. He also wished Bahrain further progress and prosperity. The two sides discussed friendship and cooperation and means to enhance and develop cooperation in the political economic, commercial, cultural and tourism fields. They also discuss political developments and challenges in the region, as well as regional wars and conflicts that threaten the region's stability and security. The two sides stress the importance of activating cooperation and enhancing cooperation in all vital fields. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Bar Rashid Al Zayani, yesterday participated in the consultative meeting of the Ministers of Foreign Affairs of Arab countries held in Kuwait, headed by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Minister of State or Cabinet Affairs of Kuwait, and President of the 156th session of the Council of the League of Arab Countries, Sheikh Dr. Ahmed Nasser Mohammed Al Sabah. The Minister of Foreign Affairs called for unified Arab efforts to stop the deteriorating security situation in the region and protect the interests of its people, warning from the threats imposed by terrorist militias that target regional security and stability. He denounced the dangerous escalation in the Gulf region as a result of the attacks carried out by the terrorist Houthi militia on Saudi Arabia and the UAE, condemning its continuous targeting of civil installations and the lives of innocent people in the two brotherly countries. The Minister of Foreign Affairs affirmed Bahrain's full support for all measures taken by the two brotherly countries to confront these attacks, maintain their security and stability, and protect their national interest. The directive of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa came to continue expanding the applications of the Penal Code and alternative measures and to parallel this with the start of the implementation of the Open Prisons Program. It reflects the vision of His Majesty the King to enhance human rights and protecting the society. It also ensures the promotion of benefit from the Alternative Punishment Program and its noble goals for the individual and society. His Royal Highness instructed the Ministry of Interior to implement the Open Prisons Program during the coming months, stressing that these programs come into the context of continuing of de to develop the legislative system under the leadership of His Majesty the King. And to talk more about this, we are joined on the phone from the United Kingdom by Dr. Deborah Swallow, who is an international consultant and a senior lecturer on diplomacy and international human resources management at Glasgow Caledonian University, London. Hello, Dr. Deborah. Open Prisons Initiative is a new penalty experience. To what extent such program is beneficial for their formation and rehabilitation? Oh, I think it's um, of great importance 
I think when a country starts to begin to think about um, a, a change in the philosophy of their their prison uh, regime that's going from going to prison as being a punishment to now thinking about um, rehabilitation is a completely different philosophy. Um, and, and we know that um, um, reoffending rates fall and it, it's much more beneficial to society to go through the idea of rehabilitation with alternative sentencing programs than to put a lot of people away and, and, and treat it as a punishment. Doctor, with the Kingdom of Bahrain's move to implement this program, what is your view on this regard to reinforcing human rights? Well, I think every, every country, whichever country it is, they have to start from where they are now. And any move, the, even the, the very first step, is a, is a positive step. I mean, you know, um, we in the UK and Western Europe, you know, we can be talking about um, democracy and prison reform and things like that. But you have to remember that, that the France, France had their revolution. We had a civil war, you know, back in the 1700s. And, uh, you know, we've, we've developed from there. Other countries haven't had that background and the idea of sort of nationhood and uh, is new to them. And they can o you can only start from where you are. And the, uh, and the, the mere fact that you're starting these programs or, or have already started them and, and the, this report has come out and it shows how you are developing them, I mean, it's, it's all a, uh, a, a positive um, uh, way forward in, in my view. That was international consultant Dr. Deborah Swallow. Thank you for joining us. Bahrain strongly condemned and denounced the launch of a ballistic missile by the terrorist Houthi militia against the UAE. Foreign Affairs Ministry praised the vigilance and efficiency of the UAE air defense that were able to intercept and destroy the ballistic missile. The ministry stressed that such terrorist acts affirmed the keenness of the terrorist Houthi militia to target civilians and civilian facilities. It affirmed that the kingdom supports the UAE in all the measures it takes to protect its security and stability, stressing the need for the international community to shoulder its responsibilities to was deterring these terrorist militias and putting an end to their continuous violations of international laws that threaten the security and stability of the region.